Welcome back. It's time for another edition of Inside Tiger Football brought to you by Rib Crib. I'm Adam Hildebrand alongside head coach Josh Blankenship uh, coming off the bye week and heading into district play. So there, there's a lot going on. You've got those first three games of the season in. Uh, let's let's talk about the bye week itself. How did, how did it treat the Tigers? What did you guys work on? Bye week was uh, perfect timing, obviously coming off a butt whooping from Owasso. Uh, had a little time to lick our wounds, but then got to spend the whole week working on us. Um, you know, we really didn't want to get into a uh, focus on Westmore too early. We wanted to really uh, spend some time getting better at, at what we do. And you mentioned coming off the Owasso game, but it also split the difference between non-district play and district play. How convenient is that timing to have that extra week as you head into this kind of part two of the season? Yeah, with all the uh, frustration of constantly being on the road, um, the positive in our schedule is that we do get that bye week uh, that we had before we kick off district play, which is obviously – uh, those are the games that matter. Even certainly, I'm, I would imagine have a, had the chance now to go back, watch film from those first three games, and kind of evaluate how did the team grade out. What did, what did you kind of notice as you went back and evaluated that non-district portion of the season? Uh, there were a lot of good things. I think uh, we we call uh, with our team. We we address this non-district period that we just finished up as a mirror test. Uh, you look in the mirror, you see what you're uh, what you're doing well, what you're not doing well, uh, and uh, cleaning those things up and, and really focusing on uh, what we are uh, as a program, offense, defense, special teams, uh, tightening those things up is, is critical in that bye week, and so I'm grateful we had it. Well, as you looked in that mirror, what are some of the things that you identified that were going well so far? Uh, we found some ways that uh, we uh, know we can run the ball, uh, how, how to do that, how not to do that. I think a lot <laughs> of times as coaches you get your ego involved and you try to get really creative on some things. Uh, that may not be needed. Uh, so I think uh, in that aspect on offense, on defense, we've found a few more guys that we really feel like we can lean on, uh, made a couple of moves uh, with some guys that are going to focus a little bit more on one side of the ball than the other. Uh, so we're excited about the direction we're going and, and, again, grateful for that opportunity in the bye week to focus on those things. You know, Griffin Stever came in as a first-year starting quarterback this year. He started white hot at, at Liberty, and then he ran into some more challenging coverages and defenses down the road. What, what do you think of his play so far this year? Uh, he's still learning. I mean, it's uh, his first year being the trigger man in a big program. Uh, he, he's making great strides, even um, uh, when you can't tell that with what you're watching, whether he's being productive or not. Um, we're seeing what we need to see from him as far as growth goes. Uh, the biggest thing I was excited about in the last game was – his poise and his competitiveness all the way through the game, uh, his toughness almost to a fault uh, where he'll stand in there and take a shot um, to do what he needs to do. He, he's making the strides we need. You mentioned him taking a shot. He, he took some hits late, and he, and he ran the ball uh, late and, and was trying to you know keep making plays specifically from that position where you, you, you need a leader for that offense and for the team as a whole. How important is it to have a guy like that who is going to play through the final whistle despite what the score might be? That's huge, and I think we've talked about it before, but those old linemen know that he was with them uh, last year as a tight end. Um, so he's got that, uh, that rapport with those guys that he's going to be whatever he needs to be physically, mentally, uh, and emotionally as a leader for those, those guys. Um, that, that says a lot, and uh, uh, we're going to lean on him. You know, Nate Jones is going to join us here in a little while. He has stepped into certainly a bigger role as the tailback this year and, and kind of leading the way in terms of touches. Uh, what have you seen from him as he's grown into that role this season? Uh, the main thing I've seen is what most people don't see. Like when you slow down the film or you, uh, you really focus in on guys that maybe, you know, those times when he's not carrying the ball or catching the ball and what he does away from the football is unbelievable. That guy is fearless. Uh, unbelievably physical, and he's a guy that we want to build uh, what we're doing. Around. We'll hear from him here in just a little while. In the meantime, we'll take a short break. We'll have more from Coach Blankenship when we return on the other side. This is Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Finding your happy place is something special and different for everyone. You probably already know where to find yours, and TTCU Federal Credit Union can help you get there. Talk with our team. We'll give you the tools to build the financial future you want. So wherever your happy place finds you, TTCU will meet you there. TTCU Federal Credit Union, life is better in balance. 
Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. I'm Adam Hildebrandt, joined as always by Broken Arrow Tiger head coach Josh Blankenship. And coach, we, we talked some about the offensive side of the ball. Let's move over to the defensive side. Uh, the, this defense has played with four down linemen. It's played with three down linemen. There's been some different looks here early on in the season. Uh, what have you guys figured out in terms of versatility on that side of the ball through the first three games? Uh, the versatility is not an issue. We've got a lot of those uh, type of bodies that are linebacker, D-line, kind of guys so being able to go from a four front to a three front um you know that versatility just exists because of the personnel we have it's also needed um you know when you don't have those huge uh presences uh up front on the d line you've got to get a little bit more creative and and that's something we're doing well what have you guys kind of learned about this defensive group through the first three games um we've learned uh, what it takes to either get them going fast or what keeps them from getting going fast. And so we're doing some tweaks with our uh, uh, pregame routine. I know that doesn't light a fire under a whole lot of people, <laughs> but that's, you know, the stuff us coaches are constantly trying to figure out is what can we do to make sure they're ready for kickoff. And, uh, and we've got a better understanding of who our guys are and what it takes to get them ready to go. On the defensive side of the ball, so much of the game is, you know, are these guys – lined up in the right spot, right. confident in what's happening as a group so that they can react instead of being thinking through the process. How do you feel like those guys have, have grasped the defensive end so far this season? They're getting there, um, and we don't like excuses, but this is their fourth, uh, as I understand it, their fourth defensive system or coordinator uh, that they've had in the past four years. So a lot of adjustment, a lot of relearning uh, what we want them to know is what we consider base football and fundamental football. Um, so they're getting there. Um, some of it's moving some pieces around. Uh, one of our captains, Dewan Atchison, is going to uh, – he got a little action on the defensive side against a wall, so he's going to be over there a little bit more regularly, as well as uh, R.J. Robert Spears Jennings uh, is going to get a lot more action on that side as well. Uh, so just tweaking some things as we get into district play, um, you know, is a big deal. When you've got guys that are capable of playing both sides, and, and even the just, you know, without those two guys coming over, the defensive too deep really didn't cover everybody who's played so far this year. Right. There's been a lot of guys step up and make plays. What does that allow you to do, not only in terms of personnel, but keeping the defense fresh over the course of a game? Well, especially early in the season when it's as hot as it's been. Yeah. Um, you know, you're always dealing with hydration and cramping, and, and so you're very cautious of not overusing some guys that you want to use everywhere. Uh, and you didn't even mention the special teams aspect, which yeah. is, you know, we, we play our starters on special teams. Um, so there's a lot of guys that are getting a lot of reps. Um, but having those guys that are willing to do anything we ask them to do is huge, uh, not only for what we're trying to do going into district play, but for a program uh, level of guys constantly being willing to do whatever we ask them to do is big. You mentioned some guys, uh, you know, having the type of build, the type of body to allow them to play either defensive line or linebacker. Uh, on the skill side of that and, and the kind of the thinking side of that, what does it take to be able to switch between those two positions uh, depending on what the defensive needs are at that time? You know, I think it always goes to their uh, overall understanding of what we're trying to get done defensively. I think the more they understand the big picture, uh, the easier it is to move from one spot to the other. Um, you know, moving a guy from offense to defense or vice versa is a little bit harder. Um, you know, anytime you can take a guy and plug him in multiple positions, you know, you got Sterling Ramsey, uh, who essentially is our backup quarterback, but he's playing receiver, might potentially get some reps at DB. That's a lot on that guy's plate. Um, so we try to minimize it as much as possible, but at the same time, we want to get the best 11 out there we can. You know, I think back to uh, a year ago, uh, spring ball wasn't a thing. Summer workouts weren't really a thing. That was probably most problematic for a group of guys who are now stepping up into that, you know, junior time frame where they missed a lot of reps that they would normally oh. get over the course of their sophomore year. Have you seen that have much effect? How, how has that group in particular handled missing some of that time and now jumping into a varsity level? Right. Um, you know, I don't know what to compare it to. I feel like everybody's dealt with the same thing. So it's a, uh, it's a common problem. You know, everybody's dealing with it. Um, uh, to measure it or say how far behind are certain guys because of the lack of football they had, um, that's hard to say. Um, I do know they're making strides um, and strides within the way we want them to grow. Um, so I'm encouraged. Uh, I'm excited about starting district play. That's Broken Arrow Tiger head football coach Josh Blankenship. We'll be back with Nate Jones in just a moment, and then Coach will join us to wrap things up here in just a little bit. You're tuned in to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Recently, you've had to put your life on hold, and we're with you in this. At Ascension St. John, 
We're now open for appointments and we are fully prepared for your safety in our care. As we open our doors again, our doctors, nurses, and care teams will continue to wear personal protective equipment. We've taken even more steps to clean and stringently disinfect all areas. We will maintain distancing in our waiting rooms and will continue to limit visitors. And we will still screen all staff to protect their health and yours. Our emergency rooms are here 24 seven. Please do not delay care. We're still delivering babies and performing surgeries. And we're open for your appointments from specialists in surgical care to routine care and health screenings. Ask us about virtual visits. Ascension St. John continues to care for you as we have been for almost a century. Thank you for trusting us. Hello and welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. I'm Adam Hildebrandt, joined now by junior running back Nate Jones. And Nate, you've gotten three games through your junior season here, all non-district games, of course. Uh, what have you thought of these first few games of the year so far? I feel like we came out strong. It could have been better, but we just got to focus on coming out and playing harder. So you've uh, kind of moved into a, 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 a certainly an elevated role this year compared to last year. You're an upperclassman. Now you're getting a lot of carries. Uh, what do you see as kind of your role in this offense and with this team? I feel like I'm not the best player, but I feel like I get to, like the drive started and like keep people's head up and stuff. Uh, Marion Horn is a guy who uh, carried the football a lot last year. He's, he's still playing, still getting some touches offensively, playing a lot on the defensive side. Do you rack his brain at all in terms of what you need to be doing as a running back? I ask him every now and then, and then he helps me out. But usually, it's just like, he just helps me, you know. What did you guys work on during the bye week? Just getting better, focusing on us. Now, of course, you got district play coming up next. Uh, games matter a little bit more. It matters in terms of making the playoffs. What are you guys looking forward to most about district play? Just coming better as a team, trying to be the champions. So obviously, you've you've got a year to go after this. This is just your junior year. But did you set any personal goals for yourself this season? Uh, I wanted to get at least 600 yards and like three touchdowns. I haven't got the touchdowns yet. So. Well, down. Those touchdowns are going to be coming, though. You've been breaking some runs, and it's not too long before you get one of those, I feel like. All right, that's Nate Jones, junior running back for the Broken Arrow Tigers. We'll be back with more on Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib in just a moment. For families who like to build their wealth while staying liquid, we have flexible rate CDs to keep your funds working hard, even when you're not. First National Bank of Broken Arrow, the right balance. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Back for one final segment with head coach Josh Blankenship. Coach, uh, we hit on this earlier. Non-district play is behind you. District play begins this week. What are you emphasizing to this team as you get into district play? Uh, these are the ones that matter. Uh, you know, the mirror tests that we talked about with non-district play and scrimmages, you know, that time's over. Um, this is essentially the beginning of the tournament and where you're seated uh, depends on how you perform in district play. Uh, Westmore, uh, we got to go on the road again. Uh, got to go over the west side. We got to play on a Thursday night. Um, so plenty of distractions, um, but um, it is district play and we're pretty focused on that and excited to play these guys. How does a Thursday game uh, change your schedule over the course of the week? You know, coming off a of bye week, not too much. You know, we were able to kind of uh, marry together um, a short week with a bye week. Uh, so we feel like we're on schedule and, and ready to go. I, I didn't even think about that aspect. That's a convenient time to have those two things happen together. Uh, what about Westmore? What, what do you expect from them as a team? Very dangerous team. A lot of really good athletes. Um, you know, when you just put on the film, it looks a lot like the legacy team that we played down in Texas as far as the athletes they have across the board. Uh, they're a little bit better up front than I think legacy was. They've got some uh, really good looking guys on both the offense and the defensive line. Uh, so we've got our work cut out for us. I think if we show up and, and play the way we're capable of playing, we'll have a good night. Um, but these guys are talented enough that they could embarrass us if we don't go show up. That's Thursday night. Broken Arrow at Westmore. We'll have the game for you on Arrowvision. Tune in. We'll be excited to bring it to you. Me and Spav and Madison on the call. And, of course, Coach Blankenship will be on the sidelines. That'll do it for this edition of Tiger Football, Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crew.